Hail. I want to show you how to sync your Obsidian Bot across all your devices, automatically and for free, using Git. Before we dive right in, let me give some context on what Git even is. Git is the name for a piece of software mainly used by developers to track changes and manage conflicts in code bases. It doesn't really matter what that means though. To describe it in terms of cloud storage providers like Dropbox or Google Drive, we have a Git provider, which would be the equivalent of a cloud storage provider here, and hosts your server. It also holds your repositories, which are just like folders in your cloud storage, and are just containers for some files. And then you have Git clients, which are just applications interacting with your server. This would be like the Dropbox or Google Drive app on your phone. Some examples of Git providers you could use include GitHub and GitLab. And so to give you an idea, GitHub is currently providing one gigabyte for private repositories and unlimited storage for public repositories. While GitLab is providing a blanket five gigabytes for public and private repositories. Going forward, we'll be using GitHub as our Git provider, but the instructions are pretty agnostic, so feel free to use any other provider or even host your own server for a super private setup. Now, there's a little pre-work to do, but after that, the rest of the video is broken up into parts, showing you how to set up automated Git sync on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, followed by Android and then iOS. But make sure to stick around to the end for a little giveaway. Anyways, let's go. So, first things first, you need to sign up for a GitHub account. To do that, go to github.com slash sign up. Once you're signed up, and you're logged in, you need to create a new repository to hold our files. To do that, just hit new on the homepage, and that'll take you to this page. There's only a few things you need to do here. First would be to fill out a descriptive repository name. Then I'm going to make this repository private so that the contents aren't accessible to the public. While this is relatively secure, keep in mind that no system is immune to a determined attack. Lastly, I'll hit add a readme file, which will make sure there's some initial contents in the repository and just makes things easier going forward. Finally, scroll down to the bottom and hit create a repository and you're good to go. Now, we can get straight into the setup on Windows. First thing to do here is to install Git. So go to this URL, hit the download link right there, and once the installer downloads, open it up, give it admin privileges, and then we can tap through most of the setup, because there aren't any promotional offers, and the defaults are good enough for us. So just going to hit next until we get to the end. And then it's going to install. And then after this, we're not going to open the application for now, but we'll come back to it. So hit finish. Alright, so the next thing to do is to install GitHub Desktop. And to do that, go to this URL, hit the download button. And then again, once it's downloaded, open the installer. And it'll ask you to OAuth with GitHub. So we're going to do that quickly. I'm just going to hit continue. And then give it access. And then it's going to ask for some author details, but the defaults should be fine for you. And from here, we're going to close GitHub Desktop and the browser and open up Git Bash. This is the application we just installed. And we're going to run a few commands in here to get auth set up for us using SSH. The first command is to generate our SSH keys. And I'm not going to use passphrase here. And then we're going to make sure our SSH agent is running. This should just be copy and pasting for the most part. Alright, now we're going to make sure our system is able to see our SSH keys and can use them. And then finally, we're going to copy the public key that we just made to our clipboard. Then go to this URL so that we can upload our public key to GitHub. So click new SSH key here, give it a title, and then copy the key that's in your clipboard down here. After that, hit add. And author set up for you. Alright, almost done now. Just need to clone the repository. So to do that, let's open GitHub Desktop again. And then from there, go to File Clone, hit URL, 
Just copy in the URL of the repository that you made earlier. And then hit clone. Once the repository is cloned, we can open it in Obsidian. So let's do that. So find that folder. And then I'm going to open it in Obsidian. At this point, feel free to load up your repository with the initial contents. I'm just going to make some changes though. Alright, so now you have your repository locally, we need to set up the automated sync aspect. To do that, go to Community Plugins, right here, and then hit Browse. Type git up here and install the plugin. Once it's installed, Enable it and hit options. Right, there's a few settings to set up in here. First one is the interval. Right there. Then you probably also want sync once you finish file edits. So tick this. Then scroll down a little. And I like to use a custom commit message, so I'm going to enter that here. Then scroll down a little more. And I'm going to tick pull on startup, just so I have the latest changes whenever I open Obsidian. Last thing I'm going to show you is how to trigger a manual sync. So to do that, open the command palette, type in git view, and open up the source control view. From here, just hit this up arrow, and everything will be synced automatically for you. You're now set up to have autosync for your Obsidian Vault on Windows. And that's that. Alright, let's get right into the Linux setup. First things first is to install git. So to do that, open up your terminal. I'm going to run a package update quickly using this command, and then we can install git, just using your package manager. Once that's done, we can get GitHub Desktop on Linux. So to do that, go to this URL, scroll down to the instructions, and just follow them to get GitHub Desktop installed on your distro. Alright. Once that's done, we want to open it up. And it'll ask you to auth with GitHub, which we're going to do. Just hit continue. And give it access. And then once we're here, it'll ask you about some author details, but the defaults should just be fine. Once that's done, we can close GitHub desktop for now. The next thing we need to do is set up SSH auth. So to do that, open up your terminal again. And then run this command to generate keys. I'm not going to use a passphrase here. And then run these commands to make sure your system can use these keys. And then we want to navigate to this URL where we can upload the keys. So press new SSH key there, copy in your key down there, and then give it a title. And then you can hit add. Alright, once that's done, we can open up GitHub Desktop again. And from here, we're going to clone our repository. So go to file clone. Go to URL, and then copy in the URL of the repository that we made earlier. Alright, once our repository is cloned, we want to open it in Obsidian. So let's do that. Find your folder, and hit open. And once you have it open, you can take this opportunity to fill the vault with some initial contents. I'm just going to make some changes here for now. Alright. And I'll go to Community Plugins so that we can set up the automated aspect. And then hit Browse. Type in Git up there. And tap Git. Once you're here, install it. And enable it. And then hit Options. So once you're here, we're going to set up a few settings. The first thing is Sync Interval. And then we're going to turn on Sync on File Edits. After that, scroll down, and I want to use a custom commit message, so I'm going to fill that out here. After that, scroll down a little more, and I'm going to turn on pull on startup, which will just make sure your vote is up to date when you first open Obsidian. I'm going to show you one last thing here, which is just how to sync manually. To do that, open your command palette, type in git view, and open the source control view. In here, if you just hit the up arrow, 
it will automatically sync all your changes. And that's that, you have automated sync set up on Linux. Alright, straight to macOS. Alright, let's get into the macOS setup. First things first, as usual, is to install git. So to do that, we're going to open up our terminal and install git using this command. Once it's installed, we're going to install GitHub Desktop. So go to this URL and hit the download button. Once it's downloaded, launch it. And it'll ask you to OAuth. So OAuth with GitHub. I'm just going to hit continue. And then it will ask you for some author details, but the default should be fine. So tap through. We can close GitHub Desktop for now so that we can set up the SSH keys. So to do that, open up the terminal again and run these commands. The first one will generate the keys. I'm not going to use a passphrase here. And in the next few, we'll make sure your system can see these keys and use them. Alright, once that's done, we're going to copy the public key to our clipboard and then go to this URL. Here, we're going to press new SSH key and then copy that key down here. After that, give it a name and then press add SSH key at the bottom. And now you're set up for auth. So, Open GitHub Desktop, and then go to File Clone, and hit URL, right here. After that, copy in the URL of the repository that you made earlier, and then press Clone. Once the repository is cloned, we can open it in Obsidian. So find your folder, and hit Open. Once you've got your repository open, you can take this opportunity to put some initial contents in, but I'm just going to make some changes for now. After that, go to your Community Plugins, and hit browse, and then type in git, and type git right here. Then hit install and enable, and then hit options to get to this page so that we can set up automated sync. So first thing is to set up the sync interval, and then you want to set up sync on file edits. After that scroll down, and I'm going to set up a custom sync message. Then scroll down a little more, and turn on pull on startup, just so your vault is fresh when you first open Obsidian. Finally, I'm going to show you how to do a manual sync. So to do that, open your command palette, type in git view, and then open the source control view. From there, if you press the button with the up arrow, everything will be synced automatically for you. And that's that. Now let's get straight into mobile. Before getting stuck in, I want to give a quick disclaimer about the setup on mobile. We will be using an app called git sync to achieve automated background sync, because it's just not possible to do with Obsidian plugins alone. This app was developed by me and was a project built out of my own necessity that I'm happy to say people are finding useful for themselves. While the app does have paid features, this tutorial only covers and requires the free stuff. But if you do need to manage your sync more than one repo at once, the app has a one-time premium purchase to unlock unlimited repo access and some other bits specific to iOS that I won't go into. At the end of this video, I'm going to tell you how to be in for a chance to win free access to premium forever, so stick around. All right. Let's get going on Android. So first things first is to install git sync from the Play Store. Once you've got that done, open up the app. And then we can tap through most of the guided setup. I'm going to hit let's go. And then give the app notification permissions. From there we'll give it storage access. And then we'll get to here, where you can take a look at the wiki if you like. Next, let's authenticate with GitHub. So just tap through there to auth, and then I'm going to hit continue. Now you might be prompted for all the details, and if so, just fill them out here. So I just need to fill out my email, which I'll do, and then head on back, and we'll be prompted to clone. So I'm going to select my repository from the list, and then select a folder. So I'm going to create a new folder inside documents, and then select it and give the app access. And now you're all done. From here, we can set up automated sync. And on Android, I recommend app-based sync. So we're going to turn it on and then give it accessibility permissions. This lets Git Sync see the name of the app that's in the foreground at the moment. So what we're going to do is select Obsidian. And then we can turn on Sync on App Opened and Sync on App Closed, like that. And then you have auto sync set up. From here, you can open the vault and then feel free to take this opportunity to fill your vault with initial contents. I'm just going to make some changes here for now. Then finally, if you're cloning a repo that you've already set up on desktop, you're going to want to go to your community plugins, and then scroll to the bottom of your git settings, and disable on this device. And then you'll be all set up for automated sync on Android. 
one last thing I'm going to show you is how to do a manual sync, which is just writing sync changes in the app at any time. And that's it. Let's do iOS. Last but not least, let's set up iOS. So first things first, install get sync. And then we're going to open Obsidian for some initial setup. Now, let's create a vault. So just give it a name and create the vault. After that's done, just create a file inside the vault so that we can recognize it later. Right, now that's done, we can go back to git sync. Okay, now we just need to go through the setup. So let's hit let's go. And then give the app notification permissions. At this point, you can check out the wiki, but we're going to skip that for now. And we're going to authenticate with GitHub. So hit OAuth, and then hit continue. If you're prompted for some author details, make sure to fill those in. Now let's clone our repository. So select it from the list, and then select a folder. So I'm going to select the folder of the Obsidian vault that we made earlier. You can identify it by the note inside. Then hit overwrite, and your repository will be cloned. From here, we can open up Obsidian and set up any initial repository contents. I'm just going to make some changes here for now. On top of that, if this is a vault that you've already set up on desktop, you're going to want to go to the git plugin settings and disable on this device. So scroll to the very bottom of the settings and enable disable on this device. Lastly, I'm going to show you how to set up a manual sync and an automated sync in git sync. So to do a manual sync, hit sync changes in the app. And for automated sync in iOS, there's the scheduled sync settings. So you can enable automated sync whenever iOS allows. And that's that. You should be set up for automated sync on iOS for Obsidian using Git. By this point, you should be set up with automated sync for Obsidian across all your devices using Git. I want to say thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you found this guide useful at all, please do leave a like and hit subscribe. I have plenty more fun stuff that isn't just super long tutorials planned for the future. And just before I talk about the giveaway, I want to say that as a solo developer, I really appreciate all the support the community has already shown for Git sync over the last few months. I only hope I can keep making the experience better for you all. Now, for the giveaway. It's very simple, just join the Discord using the link in the description, and leave a message in the channel telling me what you would use Monty Repo Management for. At the end of the month, I'll pick 10 people and reach out to give you the access. Now, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one!